scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank I've you. I've said it here, but for the sake of emphasis, let me just bring it again. That there are three, listen carefully, there are three dimensions of the anointing. Number one, the first dimension of the anointing as revealed from scripture is the anointing that is within the believer by reason of being grafted into Christ. By reason of being grafted into Christ. There is an anointing from the Holy One that we have received by reason of our oneness. Number two, there is the anointing that is upon the believer by reason of your call and assignment when god calls you and he assigns a place for you in life and destiny there is an engracing that follows you whether you are in ministry business whatever it is the moment you find your place in life there is an allocation of grace but number three the third dimension of the anointing is the grace that comes upon you by reason of discerning what god is doing within a season so it is possible to have the anointing that comes as a believer it is possible to have the anointing that comes upon your office as far as your contribution to kingdom advance is concerned and yet not have the anointing that makes for relevance per season so it is possible to find out that certain people are greatly featured in god's program per season and when god moves in another dimension this is not backsliding they are still there but not his current emphasis. There is always a grace that follows those who can through discernment and alignment understand what God is doing per season. Prophetic words help us to know what God is doing so that we can release our faith. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So this is very important. God has declared to us by his spirit that this is our year of marvelous light first peter chapter 2 please and verse 9 i'll be very fast because um so we can walk with time it says but you are a chosen race can we have kjv you are a chosen generation it says a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people he's describing a kind of people now that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible tells us what you have been called out of and it tells you what you have been called into. It says you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. That means it is the marvelous light that actually makes you a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar kind of people that the prophets before now desire to walk in certain levels of truth but were not granted and that god reserved this body of truth that he calls marvelous light marvelous light means so many things i'm going to explain a few of them now but that we are that generation that have been granted by the spirit and by the mercy of god access to this body of spiritual truth that the bible calls not just light marvelous 
light. Light in scripture has always carried an expression of grace and power and an expression of God himself. There are few times that the Bible connects light to Satan and that is to reveal him as a deceiver. For instance, the Bible says Satan appears as an angel of light. It never says he's an angel of light. And then the Bible lets us know that historically he was the light bearer, the son of the morning. He was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. This was his assignment before pride and treason brought him and he was judged to become what he is today, Satan and all of that. The Bible tells us there's no point going into it. And the Bible is not also afraid to let us know that when God made him, Satan, the light bearer, it was him who was allocated to Eden, the garden of God. Hallelujah. And many things happened and he was driven out and all of that. Then man came and the remaining is history. But it's important for us to know that light in scripture has always carried um, a positive connotation. Light is usually not used for anything negative. We're going to look at a few of them so that we really understand the implication of being custodians of marvelous light. Are you ready now? Number one, light according to scripture represents insight and illumination. Insight and illumination. Light, according to scripture, represents insight and illumination in through the truth of God's word. Every time light is used in scripture, it is used to express insight. It is used to express illumination. Ephesians chapter 1, when you begin to read from verse 15 to 23, you can write it for reference, but then I'll just look at, um, let's look at 17 for, for sake of time. Paul is praying now that the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18, he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know. When the Bible talks about light and even marvelous light, it means supernatural and unusual access to illumination and insight. Please say amen. amen. Knowledge is very important in this kingdom. This is a kingdom where dominion happens at the instance of light and knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the Bible speaking says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Psalms 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods. Pay attention now. And all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Why? Because they know not, neither will they understand. Knowing what God has done for you in Christ is not enough. You must know what it takes to make that become a reality in your life. Knowing what God has done for you in Christ is not enough. You must know what it takes to make that revelation true in your life. There are so many frustrated Christians who continue to jump and say, God has done this, the Bible says this, and, and they are right, but they are not complete. Because the goal is not just awareness. It must become manifest in your life. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory so when god says it is a year of marvelous light 
it means by his spirit he is going to be granting us access to high level insight and spiritual illumination that means he will open up to us by his spirit the deep things as far as the knowledge of the ways of god is concerned and when you find knowledge then you are already on course for a victorious life hallelujah praise the name of the lord number two very quickly marvelous light means also that god is going to be granting us understanding there is a difference between knowledge and understanding knowledge just means the awareness the information that brings to you the awareness of a possibility it does not necessarily mean that it must become your experience the awareness of a factor a possibility whatever it is is called knowledge that means if i'm aware that i need a mic to amplify my voice that is knowledge it does not mean i will have it and it does not mean i can use it are we together now understanding is the next level understanding is such a powerful miracle you know when you read the bible theologians omit um miracles like the miracle of understanding they don't add it to the miracles of jesus most times when you read the bible and see the miracles of jesus you will see the opening of the blind eye multiplying of bread but you don't see them add understanding but let me tell you understanding is a powerful miracle then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture very very powerful remember the story of the ethiopian enoch after he returned he was reading the messianic prophecy about the death of jesus and like a sheep to the slaughter he would be sent and he did not understand it at all when philip joined him he said understandest what thou readest and he said how can i except some man teach me and he began to expand to him the ways of the kingdom very very important in acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 um when you read verse um what verse now let me search it here very quickly i'm looking for the story of cornelius acts chapter 18 from verse 24 apollos i meant to say the Bible says a certain Jew named Apollos from born at Alexandria. Follow carefully. He says he's an eloquent man, mighty in scripture. He came to Ephesus. Next verse. He says this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. What a description. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But the Bible says knowing only the baptism of John. So all his fervency, his knowledge was limited to the area he understood. The Bible says, verse 26 now, that he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly. More perfectly. His problem was not ignorance. His problem was insufficient light and understanding. Are we together now? Understanding is very powerful. It's a miracle. Job in chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu was speaking and he said, But there is a spirit in man. And the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty giveth men. So understanding is a gift. Are you seeing it there now? god gives understanding to men men cannot give men understanding it is god that gives a man understanding may that miracle happen to you in jesus name this is a gadget that was designed to amplify my voice there are thousands of people that are able to hear me simply because i'm holding this device it takes more than knowledge to use it it takes understanding 
I can give you this mic sustaining the power to amplify your voice and ease your communication. But if you do not know how to activate it, you can hold a mic that is so powerful and yet have the same result as someone who never does not even know that there is a mic. You see, lack of understanding puts you, even though knowledgeable, at the same level at a, uh, with an ignorant person. It is very frustrating because the one who does not know and the one who is just aware will painfully have the same result. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? It is painful to know what should be and not know how to make it manifest. This is the role of understanding. What is understanding? The fortitude for comprehension. The ability to know how to apply knowledge in a way that it profits you. Understanding answers the question how. Knowledge answers the question what. What do I do? You are seeking for knowledge. How do I do it? You are seeking for understanding. Most people know what to do, but they do not know how to do it. I think I've given the example here. I like to give example with food because for some reason, experience has shown that when you give example with food, people understand. I don't know why, but <laughs> are we together? Get someone who is a trained chef and get someone who just freelanced his way into understanding how to cook. Give them the same ingredients under the same condition. They will produce two different results. Don't add any extra ingredient. The difference is not the ingredients. The difference is the combination. What makes that man chef is the ability to combine appropriately. Are we together now? Yes. It is the same Bible that the rich and the poor hold. It is the same Bible that the mediocre and the great hold. In fact, it may be the same church. It may be the same pastor. The difference is understanding. Hundred people can shout amen and only two will have amen manifest in their lives. It is not because the word that came from the man of God is a lie. Amen came upon a head that is knowledgeable but there is no understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. Mastery happens at the realm of understanding. The Bible says, listen carefully, it says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. It is my prayer that this year God will take us away from guessing, just guessing what you think is the way. And you can stand with confidence to say, by the privilege of God's mercy, I understand how this happens. Are we together? There are some of you who are women and mothers here. Some of you cook for weddings and programs. If, 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 I, if I say cook for all of the people within this large auditorium and all the overflows, there are women who will still not be afraid. All they need is time. And they will cook for thousands of people as though they cooked for only one person. They have mastered the art of standardizing their results. It doesn't matter whether it's 10 people or 500 people or 1,000 people. They know what to do. May you know what to do. And may you understand how to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look up, please. Do you know, still using the example of cooking, do you know there are people who can cook for 3, 4, 5 people? Once they are 3, 4, 5, that's all right. But the moment they become a crowd, the dynamics of producing the results change. There are people who can drive an ordinary small car. They would drive it with mastery. But give them a truck, the dynamics, it is still driving. Ah. When God gives you 100 members, there is a way to pastor 100 members. When God gives you 1,000, there is a way to do 1,000. It is still pastoring, but the dynamics... Many of you are unable to enter the next level of your prophetic destiny because you have not gained mastery on the ways of God to know what to do and to understand how to do it. Are we together? You must cry for understanding. So marvelous light means access 
to information, knowledge. Marvelous light also means understanding. How do you know you have gained understanding when it no longer becomes luck? How do you know you have gained understanding when you can reproduce the results indefinitely? Are we together? You lay hands on someone who has some problem in his life and the person returns back with a testimony. Then you lay hands on another and it looks like the person does not return with a testimony. Here and there you are getting miracles but you really don't know what the problem is. Understanding. Understanding. Number three, very quickly. Marvelous light also means access to supernatural direction. Say amen. amen. Direction is very, very powerful. Direction is very powerful. Psalms 119 verse 105. Psalms 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. You've heard this example and I've given it myself that I, I was and, and, and I was talking about this on Friday also. No matter how excellent and how expensive a car is, the moment it is night and it is pitch darkness, the most important factor as far as visibility is concerned is not the color of the car. It's not the brand and the make of the car. It is the level, the headlamp, is that true? And the light that comes from it. You can have a Rolls Royce. You can have whatever, you know, top brands of cars. And if for any reason it does not have light or you don't know how to put it on, you will sit and be frustrated in a car that even if it is a million dollars, you will be frustrated there. And there are some of these, with all due respect, there are some of these are precious people who do town service and community service. They, you can see them in a golf but they can add there's something they do to it to increase the light that's not how it came but they they can add to the light and in the night you will see a car that does not look like anything to write home about but it will have the kind of light of a trailer is that true so men may laugh at you let night come you may look small, but the factor that determines advancement, anybody can laugh when it is day, but when the night comes, when the night comes, it is those who have high level spiritual illumination. When your headlamp is alive and active there are many of you you are you are too concerned about the beauty of the car you've not you are seeing the sun go down and yet you are not verifying whether your light is working direction psalm 43 and verse 3 let's hurry up psalm 43 and verse 3 oh send out thy light and thy truth he says let them lead me let them bring me into thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Send out your light and let them lead me. Can I tell you, even darkness from afar looks like light. You will need a high level of light to be able to discern between light and, light and darkness in the days that we live in. Are we together now? Yes. direction john chapter 11 from verse 9 and 10 john chapter 11 from verse 9 and 10 jesus answered are there not 12 hours in a day if any man walk in the day he said he stumbleth not why because he seeth the light of this world verse 10 it says but if a man walk in the night why will that man stumble because there is no light in him there is no light in him. That means those who downplay the place of light. Because it is night, oh, the world that we are living in right now is dark. Painfully dark. Marvelous light. 
Marvelous light means access to direction by the word of God telling you what to do in a way that produces wonderful results in your life. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Number five, very quickly. Marvelous light means life. Oh, this is a powerful one. This is a powerful one. You need to hear this because your life depends on it. Marvelous light means access to life. John 1, 4. John 1, 4. In him was life. He said that life was the light of men. That means there is a relationship between light and life. Jesus, the light of the world, in John 10, 10 said, I am come. I am come. This is why the light came. So that you might have life. Light did not just come so that you may see, so that you may have life and that you will have it more abundantly. Light is very important and life is important. We have so many series, we have so many teachings to deal with um, this year by the grace of God. And one of it, we are going to be examining the concept of life, not life as living, but the Bible says if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, you see, it tells you that there, there is something, there is an administration of life that happens to you by reason of passing through the womb of a woman and having blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. But that there is a kind of life that comes to you, not just because of the blood that you carry, but by reason of the living spirit of God that lives within you. Are we together now? And this was adumbrated and demonstrated in the life of Jesus himself. He had drained his own blood, the Bible says, and took it to perform his high priestly duty. Yet he resurrected with another life. There was no blood. And the Bible says, as my father has sent me. You see that now. He said, so send I you. There is a kind of life that he has given. Because, let me tell you this. I don't mean to scare you. I'm speaking to a global audience. But you see, this pandemic and many other things. I'm not, you would not find me just stand and give prophecies. But believe me when I tell you this. What you see is not all that will happen. You just take what I'm telling you as from God. You will need more than a vaccine more than some treatment you will need to have a revelation of another administration of life working within you believe me these are days where you cannot pretend that you know this thing the environment will test you marvelous light means access to superior life now, it has become a Pentecostal cliche when we talk about the life of God dwelling within a man. You know, it just becomes, oh, these are... No, it is true. Don't feel bad that you may not have attained unto it experientially. It still does not matter. The spirit of the living God representing the life of God, when he indwells the believer, there is something, there is a reaction that happens by reason of the presence of the spirit that affects your body. The presence of the Holy Spirit does not just affect your spirit alone, your mind alone. It translates to your body. Is that true? They are life to those who find them and to their flesh. Their flesh. We have to know this. So that people don't just walk around and die just because you can breathe you will need to show the excellency of your connection with the spirit of life this happened as we know historically in spokane during the days of john g lake that when the plague was killing people it was destroying people that man seemed to be invincible and immune to that plague and when they found out that he understood that God dwells in me, 
God dwells in me. This is not just empty bragging that causes casualties. It's a revelation from heaven. Life. Number two, there are things about life that you have to believe. Listen. The Bible says we have been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit with Him far above principalities, powers. When you believe this, you can convince yourself that no enchantment and no divination, whether it is through the water you drink, look at this, watch this. I, I don't mean again to scare you, but someone concocts a charm and drops it. And you come and match it moving innocently. That charm does not just affect your spirit. Your physical leg that did not believe in the charm starts swelling. You never confess that I received the charm, yet the charm is working. Are you seeing that now? Someone comes close to you and maybe has a flu just ordinary flu and he comes close to you he does not ask you whether you want it he just came close to you you didn't see anything happening yet one or two days later you find out that you also have a flu there are diseases called communicable diseases science knows that far that you can transfer things even beyond the realm of sight is that true these are the days when there will be a kind of people on earth. Believe me when I tell you this. There is the workings of the spirit from within us that will demonstrate the excellency of the power of God. That one day people will ask you, how are you outsourcing your health and your life? And you will tell them. Now, there are a group of people, I'm not by any means promoting this or creating anything but i learned that there are a group of people called breatharians and some of them have have lived for 10 20 15 years without food they believe that they are taught some way of absorbing energy into their body and i mean i've watched videos on that literally they have conquered food and hunger and all of that at best they just live off water for 10 years 15 years and all of that now i'm saying these are people who are not born again yet they have tapped into the vastness of the potential of a human body life so that by reason of the high level spiritual illumination that we have Medical people are here, and I may be wrong, but I know that there is something called physiotherapy. Am I right? That one of the ways that you deal with ill health and, and viruses, am I right on that? I hope I don't say what is wrong. You can administer light, and it can correct an anomaly in the human body. Science knows that. That there is a relationship between light and health and life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, by every light. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance of food gives vitamins, minerals. If you eat rice, is it the rice you really need? There is the nutrients from it. So if you eat scripture, what really happens? Because the Bible tells us that both of them can do something to you. Hmm. Believers, let's not toy with our life literally in the days that we live in. You see that? There are all kinds of mysterious sicknesses and wicked spirits have complicated it so people do not even know which one is medical again and which one is demonic. There are people who can have a legitimate medical condition as soon as that one is over demons just cashing on the pain and continue pain that you know that this one now is no longer medical if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead 
dwells in your mortal body that that spirit can quicken your mortal body men of god if you're a man of god here you have to know this otherwise the burden of ministry will kill you you can you can't hide this thing because the energy will be dissipated people are seeing it can i tell you this i didn't i didn't come to the earth by mistake i will never live by mistake this is this is my covenant with god my parents have never told me that i arrived by mistake there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to separate my spirit from my body out of my cooperation no you have to choose what to believe otherwise anything will just sweep you like that and declare it over yourself by light i i administer life i decree and declare life and longevity and abundance please declare it not the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence not enchantments and wickedness no exalted above principalities above powers above the ill speakings of darkness hallelujah let me tell you this and i i don't mean to sound arrogant and i sincerely apologize but believe me when i tell you if i were lying about what i'm teaching you it would have shown i have prayed for too many people with situations that you are not even supposed to come near them believe me there are suicidal things you don't try except you know what you are standing on hallelujah i remember years ago a, a family wanted to destroy i think some charms that you know because the person to inherit the the thing was not interested so and there is a consequence for not being interested you know what i'm talking about if it's your turn and you dare make up your mind that you are not interested there are there are there are side effects and so when they brought it they were they put it in a leather i did it i said open it let me see and they were afraid for me i said ah afraid for me when i held it i looked at it these things were all elements of the earth the blood there is it not a, 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 maybe chicken or goat or whatever it is the coffin that was there and all the things all those enchantments when i held them i said look let me tell you something these things don't just work anyhow there is a condition that makes even jesus knocked on my heart to enter why should something enter without knocking it's, believe believe what i'm telling you I'm not glorifying Satan, but I'm, I'm demystifying some of these things. The person talking to you is not stupid, believe me. By reason of what I, I do, I have, I have seen all kinds of things. Life. Life. You think it's the devil's plan for me to be alive now? There are people Satan does not want pain for them. He wants them to die. Because even if they are in pain, it's still a, a disadvantage. The fact that they are alive. Ah. Listen to me. Some of you are even afraid for me. Apostle, don't talk like this. <laughs> Say in the name of Jesus. The life of God is at work in me. Say in the name of Jesus, the life of God 
is at work in me. The Bible describes the believer and he says that even when they take poison, you see that? He didn't say they will go and look for poison and take it. But that when they take poison, it is only when we get to heaven that we will know what we have eaten in this life and the things that we enjoyed that were supposed to kill us. This is what I believe. It is, it, is my, it is my conviction. I do not believe that any mortal man born of a woman can take my life. I truly do not believe it. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, this is the year when you have to believe. Don't take the risk of just living in an evil world like this without knowing these things it will cost you more than you can imagine are we together now man of god you can't be traveling from region to region preaching jesus healing the sick and not know what you are standing on the devil will not watch you raise people from wheelchair end captivities over people's lives and not want to take your own life but jesus said no man take it from me he said i have the power to lay it down no man take it from me the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you this is why laziness in studying the word of god is you're agreeing with death among other spirits to destroy you hallelujah are we learning life john 8 12 john 8 12 let's hurry up we have to pray john chapter 8 and verse 12 then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness please help me read it but shall have the light of life there is light that produces life but shall have the light of life number five marvelous light means supernatural empowerment listen let me tell you believers we are in the days of his power we really truly are in the days of his power a demonstration of the authority and the power of the kingdom in a dimension that will dumbfound principalities and powers and that happens by light supernatural empowerment happening at the instance of light it takes light to reign it takes light to exert dominion are we together now jesus said behold i give you power the greek word is exousia authority over snakes and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and he says nothing shall by any means is what you should pay attention to you have to find out the means satan has bloodline is a means your ignorance is a means and yet the bible still says that you are so fortified that if you have the understanding nothing shall by any means hurt you i give you authority the word power there does not just it's not dunamis it is authority the power that comes by reason of knowledge because the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all so this is the kind this is the kind of of authority that is demonstrated on account of light to trample upon snakes trample upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you are we together we need power we have a lot of teachings along that line but you need to manifest the power 
of the Holy Spirit and manifest kingdom authority in truth. Kingdom authority in truth. Marvelous light means a season of showing forth, a season of unveiling, a season of exploits. That is the sixth now. Showing forth. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine. How many of you know those are two instructions? You can arise and remain there. He says, arise. Then he says, shine. I will tell you how to shine. To arise is one thing, but to shine is another. Arise and shine. And both of them will happen because your light is come. The same light that makes you arise is the same light that can make you shine. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, he says. For darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. He says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13. Ephesians 5, 13. The Bible says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. That means in this season, God is going to be unveiling things. Secrets that have kept families down. Secrets that have kept lepatia. The, the puzzles and mysteries that looks like what is the, what is the mystery behind this? The Bible says anything that can make manifest is light. The strength of darkness is secrecy and mysticism. You do not understand it, but light comes to make manifest. Lord, why don't we rise in this family? What is it about this ministry that it does not grow? What is it about my influence, your call, your grace upon my life? And light comes. When light comes, that which is hidden is made manifest. Are you learning now? This is very powerful. So marvelous light means all of this. Insight and illumination, understanding, direction, an end to confusion, life, and then supernatural empowerment. Very quickly, let me run through a few requirements. As you know, everything in the kingdom has demands. Or requirements are we together it is not all up to God and it is not all up to the saint in Christ there is always a participatory requirement now please pay attention this is the role you have to play in making this year become for you in reality the year of marvelous light number one you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. I wrote it down here. You must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Knowledge would not just come and meet you. You have to pursue with passion. Don't forbear with ignorance this year. Make up your mind. I'm tired of this generational ignorance. I'm tired of this limitation, absence of light. And you pursue it diligently. And the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, everyone that asketh, receiveth, everyone that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocks, he says, the door shall be opened. Say amen. amen. So you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Number two. I wrote down here that you must be teachable. You must be meek. James 1.21 If it will be your year of marvelous light, then you must be teachable. Wherefore, 
lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul say meekness can i tell you this meekness is a posture you put yourself in a position where you are passionate about knowing what you do not know and when you find an opportunity to know it you drop away a mentality we call in this side of africa called an i too know mentality those who believe they know everything are the ones who don't know anything you easily know those who know by their passion to know more are we together now what will the word of god be doing in the temple the word of god yet at age 12 he was in the temple learning under people he would one day save are we together now listen you must cultivate passion for knowledge don't come to church don't come to the house of god this year hoping to learn one thing or the other no no you must come in intentional ready to receive ready to damage every level of ignorance that you find don't forbear with ignorance don't forbear with darkness have the meekness to learn number three this is very important you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life that means it is your responsibility under god to list the several areas of your life where you desire to see the light and the power of god and begin to probe them one by one the bible says there was this man called naaman he was a mighty man a captain of the syrian army the bible says he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous are we together now yes this is the year where when god shows you mercy in an area you pat your back in that area but you turn and begin to say lord thank you for these areas but here 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 and you stay with god until your joy is complete somebody say my joy must be complete this year one more time say my joy must be complete you can choose whatever year but the word is for this year so if you if you want it before you see jesus someday save johnny your faith can take you there but there are people who are insisting that this year this year are we to you must be determined can i tell you this engage the word in every area of your life every area number four very quickly you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before this is one demand you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before very popular scripture psalm 73 and verse 17 psalm 73 and verse 17 let's hurry up until i went into the sanctuary of god then understood i that level of understanding only happened when i went into the sanctuary of god there is a level of understanding that cannot happen to you just in your private quiet time your place there there is a level of light and illumination that happens when we come together as a family of faith are we learning now you must discipline yourself this year and fight any kind of spiritual laziness and laxity i was glad not i dragged myself i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord hallelujah it is very very important you must be committed you must be committed to the gathering of the saints number five this looks like a simple one but it is one of the major keys major keys as far 
as walking in the reality of marvelous light is concerned you must be committed to speaking the word of god all through this year now light shines in this kingdom when we command it to second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6 light does not just shine it says for god who commanded the light to do what so how does light shine for you you command it to shine that's how god come it's, it didn't say god who wanted light to shine god when it has to do with shining you don't wish shining you command shining for god who commanded the light to shine God who commanded the light to shine. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. Light be. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. This is the year when creation must hear your voice. Listen, this is not the year to be silent. This is not the year. Pray for me. Pray for me, apostle. I will pray for you, but you must get up and say in the name of Jesus. January, hear the word of the Lord. I command light. You change that light to anything light can give. God, who commanded light to shine. I love scripture. He would have just said, God had shined in their heart. But he said, God, this man who commands light to shine. So if your light is not shining, could it be that the light is waiting for an instruction? Waiting for an instruction. In the name of Jesus, my tomorrow I speak to you. You can prepare a triumphant entry for your destiny. And while you are saying it, let me tell you this. Satan is the master of the flesh realm. He will say, did you not speak like this in 2021? What happened? Master, we have toiled all night, remember? He said, nevertheless. Next time the voice of doubt comes, say, nevertheless. 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 Shabaruka Toska Debata. Nevertheless, in the name of Jesus. Oh, ministry did not rise. Nevertheless, you kept speaking but went down in business. Nevertheless. God who commanded light. Can I tell you this? Truly, I want you to believe this. If you keep quiet, I've taught you this. One of the assignments of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where your brain keeps wishing for many things that never happen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If Jesus died without speaking that he will come back to life, he would have been surprised. Jesus did not just resurrect because the Holy Ghost came to resurrect him. He sent a word into his third day to wait for him there. Don't enter into a day that you have not spoken into. Hear me. The Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. And the Bible already tells you how God makes things. Genesis 1. That means there should not be anything in that day if the lord made the day anything he made in genesis 1 was good but the bible lets us know that satan also stands at the corridor of every new day and waits to be able to sow all kinds of things this is the year to declare lord we hear that there will be sounds of mourning we hear that there will be sounds of of lack economic meltdown and all of that but in the name of jesus i create my reality the same way there was egypt and goshen i stand by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead don't be too big to speak even god spoke
listen listen to me when you get up in the morning train yourself to stop this complaining and these lamentations you get up in the morning and you're already angry oh this day again you check your text messages you check your the news in nigeria and they say just to let you know that <laughs> you know what is going on naira has gone down this one has gone down and you watch and say just to let you know and somebody just calls you and said look just to let you know i lost my job you get up under that kind of climate the spirit of depression exactly what is waiting for but for someone you lay your hands on your head and say in the name of jesus i have the power to choose meaning i can reject and anything that does not line up with the word of god i reject it can i tell you this when there was famine in samaria there were two people who the famine did not affect one was the king the other was the prophet elisha did not look like he was a hungry person moving around no he came to comfort two women who were eating their children you first have to enjoy salvation to be a savior are we together now you can't help somebody who is suffering when you are like them. So that God will sort your life so that you can now become a blessing to many. When they are saying, oh, there's no rice, there's no this, the market food is gone, all of a sudden they see a kingdom ambassador. You are distributing food as if you are holding a charm on your hand. And people say, come, oh, I, more than the food, what is happening to you? And you tell them I've been exalted. There is something he did to me. Make up your mind that you are going to speak the word of God. Make up your mind. Don't be silent. Believe me. You get up in the morning. Father, thank you for this day. I decree and declare. I am blessed. You are on a journey. Don't just wait. You already know that there are arrows that fly by day. And in our world now, there are arrows that walk by day. They don't even fly. There are wicked people. They are not just holding arrows. They are the arrows themselves. I know a bit about presidential or priority envoys. When, when, when a priority individual is about to pass a road, within a reasonable vicinity around the distance there is there is an intelligent system of of gauging the safety of that place are they not ministering spirits listen don't feel bad that okay if something happened your loved one was kidnapped i want you to grow spiritually make up your mind lord if it will crash i won't enter but if i enter it won't crash yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I tell you, if Jesus kept quiet over that boat, he would have been surprised what would happen. It's a fish that would have swallowed him like Jonah and kept him at the base of it. Jesus did not just stand and say, don't worry, it's all right, I'm here. He said, peace! Be still. When you see storms arising, your children just come it looks like they are sick you are hearing an evil report from the place of work that they are going to downsize people because it's 2022 when all that noise is around you hush them peace be still peace be still peace be still peace be still in the name of jesus marvelous light peace be still listen listen to me there are many of you who are saying apostle god has told me so many things but how will the help come how will i be able to do the things i'm doing january can become the same as last year's own if you keep quiet just because a prophetic word is before you does not mean anything will change you have to engage it with understanding Hallelujah. 
when God gave this word, I took it as a personal word for myself first. Flogged it out with destiny before coming out here. Light. Light. Lord, this generational poverty that will not let my family go. We want to serve you, but this thing is keeping us, distracting us, and not giving us room to serve you. You want to pray, you just think of money. You want to fast, you are thinking of money. Lord, end this. Grant me rest. And you begin to pray and speak. I don't know what to do, but start by speaking. It is in speaking direction comes. Hallelujah. I came here to charge you. We are going to pray. Can I tell you this? There is more than sufficient grace. My dear people, let me admit to you truly. I know many of you have heard many prophetic words about 2022. Don't think those prophetic words are a lie. Most of them are true. However, let me show you something. That I have taught you here that the prophecy of scripture sustains a unique ability to veto and redefine the believer's reality. Are we together now? Yes. When you keep quiet, you will be a victim. Most of the men and women of God who speak within the boundary of scripture, I'm not just endorsing everybody, but I'm just saying there are people who are communicating the counsel of God and they are not lying. Some of those people came from the secret place and they are telling you this and that and that. You don't just hear and say, oh, so what do we do? And wait for it to come and happen. No. If I tell you rain is coming, what do you do? You check whether your window is open. You close it. If you must be outside, you get an umbrella. It's unwise to know rain is coming and the rain still beats you. What the, 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 the privileged information was wasted. Can I tell you this? Like never before, one of the things I know Satan wants to do is to disgrace believers and make it look like we have been believing a lie. I'm telling you this. I can tell you this as a man of God. Satan wants to see that believers are weary. Innocent pastors in ministry, no results, nothing happening. Sincere believers who love the Lord, you start a walk and it looks like you are struggling. Nothing is happening. As a mother, as a family person, when you have three or four children come to meet you with school fees, Pastor, you have not paid your school fees. And you stand there and almost feel stupid for serving the Lord. How about mysterious illnesses that just eat up finances of families? We're going to take a few minutes to pray this thing into our lives. And please hear me, beloved. Do not be in a hurry to just run around. I want you to stay and pray. This year, from a human standpoint, I know the things I've seen. This year comes with a lot of challenges. Peculiar challenges. I can tell you this as a man of God. I have seen it. But the Bible says, listen carefully. The Bible says, a thousand shall fall by thy side. Do you know what it means for one thousand people to fall by your side? And only you standing? And ten thousand by your right side. He said, but none shall hurt you. You shall stand and behold the reward of the wicked. The first prayer tonight is to exempt yourself. And then, as a responsible ambassador of the kingdom, to begin to contribute your quota of intercession and spiritual investment over the territory. To say, Lord, because I am here, we decree and we declare. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. First, thank the Lord for the word you have heard. Thank Him for this charge that you have heard. Thank Him for this charge that you have heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, we are going to pray two prayer points. 
and then I'll just carry out a prophetic instruction that God gave me. The Lord gave me an instruction that I should rebuke the spirit of death. So I want to pay attention because there is a spirit that actually kills men. Truly there is. And one of the things that the devil wants to use to scare and threaten people with is death. That enemy. You see that? This is why God anointed us. That in addition to your personal spiritual growth, you come under that prophetic climate that is able to speak. We are not just speaking empty words. There is a throne that backs what we are saying. Hallelujah. None of you will die. I'm saying it again. None of you under the sound of my voice will die. And anyone in partnership with demon spirits, anyone in partnership to bring you down to the grave and discourage many people in the name of Jesus Christ, this night the curse of the Lord falls upon their heads. Are you now ready to pray? I'd like you to begin to declare that this year is my year of marvelous light name every aspect of your life ministry marriage children business go ahead and declare by the power of the holy spirit it is my year of marvelous light in the name of jesus supernatural insight into the mysteries of the kingdom understanding of the ways of god the administration of the life and the power of god within my heart and within my body direction 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 even by the spirit go ahead and pray this is the year for supernatural empowerment i am not weak strengthened by the power of the holy ghost decree and declare it is not a negative year for me i prophesy by the power of god light shine light shine light shine command the light to shine in every area of your life light shine over my spiritual life this is a year for high level spiritual ascendance pray over your health and your body in the name of jesus my body is preserved preserved by the power of the holy ghost kept by the power of god kept by the power of god no demon no devil no cause no enchantment will prevail over my body in the name of jesus pray pray for your family cover them with this prophetic word as for me and my house we will not only serve the lord we will serve in safety we will serve in peace in the name of jesus in jesus name i pray now listen to me you are going to mention every month from january to december give it an instruction by the word of god you're going to command it to shine take away every negative thing from your january from your february go ahead pray january i speak to you you are the month that the lord has made february the month that the Lord has made. March. The month that the Lord has made. April. May. June. I decree and declare. Disaster. Be taken from my months. Shame. Be taken out of my months. Death. Be taken out of my months. Declare. Retrogression be taken out of my mouth 
dishonor be taken out of my mouth by the power of the Holy Ghost from January till December my life and my days will bring glory to the name of the Lord Prophesy as I travel in the air, I decree and declare safety and preservation as I drive on land, safety and preservation by the sea, safety and preservation in my coming out, in my going in, safety and preservation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Please don't be tired, we're praying. Now hear me. The season of marvelous light also means an unveiling of what is hidden. Are you ready to declare that everything in my life that God has put within me that should find expression to bring glory to the name of the Lord and to be a blessing to me that has been covered hitherto. This year you are unveiled. Go ahead and pray. Every gift, every anointing, every unction locked up within your spirit every business idea every potential locked up within your spirit find visibility let the light reveal let the light reveal let the light reveal let the light reveal in the name of jesus Hallelujah. 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 I want you to pray. You're going to mention as much as you can the names of your loved ones and all who are within your care and declare light. Father, expose anything that wants to keep these people down, wants to keep them limited. In the name of Jesus, let light come. Let it expose and let it lift them. Go ahead. Open your mouth. Pray for your parents. Pray for your children. Mention them by name. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. Holy Ghost is brooding. Over every darkness, you are causing light to shine from God. Please pray. This year, my children will not give me headache. They will not give me trouble. Let there be light in my family. Let there be light over my parents. Let there be light over my loved ones. As for me and my house, over every darkness. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Apologize, I know we've stretched a few minutes, but please listen to me. Everybody is going to pray over the works of your hands. Don't say it does not matter. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Every time there is hunger. Can I tell you this? Listen. It is important, one of the reasons why we pray that the supplies of heaven find expression in our lives so that it can grant us the stability to not compromise. Can I tell you the truth? Many believers under pressure will do things they will not believe they will do. It's easy to point fingers at people and say, oh, this one, this politician, this one. But we have to pray. Even Jacob, in Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2, Jacob said, why do you look at yourselves like this? I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. He said, get down thither and buy for us so that we will live and not die. Even a prophet, when he is hungry, he will send his future to Egypt. You've heard me say it. I will never be the man of God who will only focus on the spiritual development of God's people and not care about their well-being. Christianity is, is a responsible faith practice that attempts or that, that covers the love of God and his intention is to bring holistic, holistic life and joy to us. One of the major areas where God's people, right now as I speak, not something that will happen, is in this area of finance and economy. The Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender. That means if I want to make you a slave, I don't have to make you a slave by making you a slave. I only make you a slave by making you a borrower. Are we together? There are many believers who are in terrible financial situations. I've had the honor and the privilege to pray with a number of people, especially in recent times. People who love God sincerely, but the bills will not let them rest. Can you pray that one prayer before I speak over your life? Listen, you are going to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, this is the season where you will see the manifestation of God's grace, even in the area of supplies. Pray for yourself, pray for your ministry, pray for your business. Please do not entertain lack and want. It will affect your convictions. Pray. Sabarata katabarantas kadebalakoshiata. Open the heavens, O God. Grant wisdom. Grant relationships. Supernatural ideas. Strange manifestations of favor. Bring your people to their wealthy place. Bring your people to their heaven. The slavery of lack and want and poverty We curse you by the God of heaven This is a season of light Your people will experience supplies Supernatural supplies Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah. Let me encourage you, therefore, listen to me. When the flood, when the flood was going to come, God called one man, called Noah, and said, Noah, flood is going to come upon the earth and is going to kill everything, everything that has life. Therefore, build an ark of three stories of gopher wood, and he gave him specific dimensions. And when he built the ark, it was never God's desire to save only eight people. There is nowhere written in the Bible where God said it is only eight people I wanted to save. The stubbornness of the fallen man is what landed them in that flood. The ark could be able to take as many people. The animals obeyed, but men disobeyed. 
The animals did not even wait to experiment with the rain. From the bush, they started coming two by two, seven by seven into the ark. But men, they began to laugh and to mock them. And the Bible says, God closed that door. Can I tell you this? I don't mean to be arrogant. But one of the reasons why God sent us to this city is because of these times. We are not the only ones doing what we are doing. It's a collective effort of the body of Christ. But we have a contribution and a role to play. This is, I'm saying this because many people's salvation is at the mercy of what they hear. This is the year that you will make up your mind. That you are not going to come to the house of God alone. You are not first for yourself. And then to make up your mind. That these my children who represent my future. But are very very lazy and careless when it has to do with their spiritual growth. I must begin to invest in their spiritual growth. Or your spouse who goes to the house of God. And then leaves you behind or you leave your spouse behind. You say, no, 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 no. It is as for me and my house. Remember, the weakness of ignorance is where Satan will attack from. As for me, I made up my mind this year that through all our arms of expression, the school of ministry, our external ministrations, the Sunday services, and the media ministry, and every, every, every arm of expression, we will give our best to see that within the jurisdiction of the grace and the assignment committed that we bring light first to you and then by expansion as a contribution to the body of Christ. As for me, I've made up my mind and renewed my covenant with God that for me, I will give my best. It is up to you to make up your mind. Can I tell you this? minimize some of this time of going around begging people shadow boxing and stay with god adopt the wisdom of mary mary was yes martha was running around trying to get things done and nothing happened because in this kingdom we rise by light it takes more than desire some of the teachings that god has put in my heart for me, in fact, it's, it's, as if, it's as if I should keep us here and sit us down and, and just begin to teach indefinitely. Make up your mind to listen. Thank God for the power of the internet for those who are unable to directly be here. You don't have an excuse from anywhere in the world. You can connect and listen. Not just once. Listen again. You can go back now and go and listen again to this message. Don't assume you understand. And let me encourage pastors here. Please encourage your members too to listen. This is not the year to ah preach, preach up. Listen, listen with the intention of growth. Are we together? Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Whatever sacrifice you will make, participate. You can be here and yet not be here. Be here this year with your heart and your spirit and don't be distracted. Get something to write or get your device or whatever. Make up your mind. When you go back home and God grants you the grace, you can take a day or two with your loved ones if possible. Discuss the things that have been taught. You will be surprised how many people sit in church and don't get anything that is taught. You ask them, what, what did God say? They say, I was blessed. And they never, never become an expression of the word. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up. In the name that is above all names. Father, we have begun this year with you as a global family of faith and your people have come i have shared with them that which you put in my spirit lord i pray the anointing and the grace that makes for walking in the experience of marvelous light may that grace come upon you now may that grace come upon you now may that grace come upon you now 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shame and reproach that has lingered around your life and destiny. In this year 2022, I prophesy to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let it leave you like smoke before the wind. I pray for your spiritual life. Every attack on your passion for God, your passion for prayer, your passion for the word, your passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, rise above that limitation now. Yeah. Hear me, for anyone here who men have mocked you and said, where is your God? Where is the evidence of your passion and your commitment? This year, may your results answer that question. May your results answer that question. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Jesus was speaking and said that the kingdom is like a woman who lost a coin. And when she lost the coin, the first thing she did was to get a candle. And she lit that candle and started sweeping through that room. When she swept that room, she found the coin. There are many things that are not in your life, but are still within range. There is a particular kind of light you need to put on and start sweeping that room. I decree and declare the mystery and the revelation that controls restoration for what you have lost. May that light come to you right now. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, As Peter was bound, bound hand in chain, something happened to him. There was a light that came into the prison. That was the first thing that happened. It was not just that the chains were, were loosed. Light came into the prison. Are we together now? And when light came, there was liberty. He walked out and he was free. Can I tell you this? Every prison, financial, spiritual, whatever prison you found yourself in, the lights that must shine in that prison and swing that door open, may that light come to you now. I decree and declare let there be a supernatural marking of the spirit upon you every manifestation of death I command it far from your habitation hear me and any devil of darkness on a campaign to kidnap you or kidnap any of your loved ones I stand by the God of my covenant may the earth open and swallow them for your sake hear me my Bible says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means therefore I decree and declare 2022 find peace find peace find peace all your troublers, I command them to leave you in peace. Leave you in peace. Spiritually, physically, financially. I speak peace to your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every month has what is supposed to deliver. In the name of Jesus, you will never carry over any prophetic blessing. Hello. The blessing for January must come in January. The blessing for February must come in February. The blessing for March must come in March. The blessing for April must come in April. The blessing for May must come in May. The blessing for June must come in June. July must come in July. August must come in August. September must come in September. October must come in October. November must come in November. December must come in December. Hear me. The only thing permitted to happen in your life this year 
is speed not delay in the mighty name of jesus christ finally let me pray we pray for abuja the fct we pray for nigeria as our nation and africa we understand that we're in the middle of very turbulent times even as a nation can we stand in agreement and speak this is the federal capital territory we owe a responsibility of priesthood to speak over the nation he said give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem as a praise he calls us the light i didn't have the time i would have taught you that the whole goal of having light is so that you will eventually become the light no it does not just stop at the realm of having light you become the light stretch your hands prophetically to any direction and declare in one minute over abuja declare over nigeria where are the priests and the watchmen decree and declare over this place we stretch our hands as rods of authority abuja hear the word of the lord in the name of jesus we declare peace we declare progress we declare safety and security of lives and property we pray for the government we pray for the house of assembly the senate we pray for all those who play different roles in this nation we declare wisdom upon them even at these turbulent times are you praying over this nation we pray for every region declare over nigeria we pray over the east the west we pray over the north in the name of jesus the south preserve your people oh god let the covenant of david that covenant of mercy speak across the six geopolitical zones in this nation we extend our prayer to the continent of africa in the name that is above all names we decree and declare preserve your elect preserve your people even in this season in the name of jesus christ now before i make the altar call let me just encourage you please listen to me this year i want to encourage you be very wise in the things you say whether physically or on social media make sure you are a christian don't go on social media and and plant fear and lamentations are we together within the jurisdiction of of this ministry i can charge you by the message of god make sure that whether you're on social media or wherever you are a life giver otherwise just just go and flog it out with god there is already palpable fear fear all around sounds of dismay mayhem all kinds of things there has to be a voice of hope rising if you must say something let it be something that can minister life and edification don't pride in selling conflict negative things all kinds of things strengthen the body of christ take advantage of the grace for wisdom he's given you you hear some disaster has happened somewhere why don't you send the scripture as your contribution over that situation lamenting and dissecting and ending there does not bring that 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 kind of transformation that people need there's already fear it will not come near you in the name of jesus now very quickly there are people here who have not surrendered their heart to jesus christ the first light that apostle paul as saul encountered was jesus himself he called himself the light please minimize movements i believe that there are people who came within this auditorium all the overflows and there's so many following online you're saying apostle this is my moment i came with my heart open ready to hand over everything to jesus or you are saying apostle i've given my life to christ i remember but as it is i need to rededicate my life in truth if you belong to any of these two categories we have just one minute for you please i want you to leave your seat very quickly and come and stand right here let's appreciate them as they come very quickly god bless you as you come please clear the way for them if they are coming koinonia is this the best you can do this is our first service for the year come to jesus
He's given you a new beginning. That light that ministers life. Come. You don't have to kneel. Please stand because of space. Thank you. Please come. Celebrate them as they come. Our time is gone, but let's honor them. This is salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, while, while they are coming, let's, let's just allow a minute for them to come. I, I want to very specially appreciate, I didn't have time to just um, give salutations and appreciations because of our time, but I want to very specially appreciate a dear friend, a man of God, all the way from the U.S., Apostle Shola Babalola. God bless you, sir, and your dear wife. You're not here alone. God bless you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good to see you. And then to honor everyone, uh, the PFN, the PFN youth. Are they here? P yes, Pastor Kotil and the team. Let's honor them. Our dear PFN people, I love you. Thank you so much for what you do for Jesus. We're proud of you and we sincerely love you. Thank you, Pastor Kotil and your team. God bless you. Hallelujah. Every other person, may the God bless you. You will go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. I thank all of you for making this bold decision to stand. You're not standing before a man. You're standing before Jesus himself, the captain of our salvation. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head and please say this after me very clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard that you are that light. I need you in my life. I ask you to forgive my sins. I ask that you give me a new beginning. Father, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I decree and I declare that from tonight until forever, I am a child of God, a recipient of eternal life and the righteousness of God. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am born again i go forward ever and backward never amen please keep your hands lifted father we thank you and we honor you for these precious ones i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead that the power of sin is broken over your life by the mercy of god i declare that you go forward go from glory to glory grace to grace in jesus name i pray amen and amen please i want you to do well to follow the counselors they are waving their placards let's honor them as they go honor them as they go this way they'll spend just a few minutes with you and you'll be back to your seat please honor them very quickly hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us